So I decided to take a break from the chassis whilst the rest of the panels come in from E30 Garage Norway and focus on a few things that still need looking at. In this episode I'm going to restore the fuel tank. I removed this from the car what must have been two years ago now and I haven't really looked at it since. Overall it's in pretty good condition, with what looks like some minor rusting around the outside and a few spots where the thin undercoating has been chipped off. Also, everything that's attached to it looks like it's original and hasn't enjoyed its 30 years in the UK. Firstly, I'm going to remove everything from the tank itself, starting with these large clips. It's a good job I have a zinc plating kit, as I couldn't find these on the internet anywhere. If anyone has a part number, please leave it down in the comments. This fuel pump probably isn't original and it looks as if it was changed not too long ago. The same thing happened with these pieces of foam. I couldn't find a part number for them and I'm not sure what they're for. If anyone knows, please also let me know down in the comments. The bolts holding these brackets on were in terrible condition and I knew they weren't going to come easily. It snapped in half instead of undoing, but at least it's off. The other one was much easier. Next was this connection pipe, which was pretty well seized. The second I got some movement, the nut spanned but so did the pipe, which kind of jeopardised the whole thing. Same thing on the other side, the nut would just not let go of the pipe. At this point I thought, oh well, no biggie, I'll just buy a new one. What's it going to be, 7 or 8 quid, maybe 30 or 40 if BMW have limited stock and have stopped making them? So I proceeded to remove it and in the process completely destroy it. We'll come back to the true cost of that decision later. Even small things like removing a jubilee clip can be time consuming when it's 30 years old.
With all of the easily removable hoses off, all that was left was some adhesive from the foam pads. I need to now plug all of the holes so no flu can get in when I clean it in the parts washer. But before I do that, I want to thank Get Roman for sponsoring another episode and helping tackle erectile dysfunction, which worryingly is more common than you might think. A whopping 52% of men over the age of 40 experience ED at some point. Even worse, roughly 75% of those guys don't seek treatment. That's why Get Roman has made it easy to chat with a doctor online. With Roman, you can get medical care for ED from the comfort and privacy of your own home, so you can handle everything online in a convenient, discreet manner. Getting started is simple. Just go to getroman.com forward slash restore and complete the online visit. If your doctor decides that the treatment would be appropriate, they can prescribe genuine medicine that can be delivered in discreet packaging right to your door with free two-day shipping. So come on lads, talk to the doctor. ED can be a tough one to tackle, but it's really important to get checked out. With Roman, it's easy to connect with the doctor. Thanks to Get Roman for supporting Restore It, let's have a look inside the tank. To my surprise, it's actually in great condition in there. I don't know why I thought it would be any different, but I'm still relieved to see it. Now to cover all the holes so I can give this thing a good clean. Now I'm sure some of you would be saying restoration complete at this point, but if we look closer, we can now see the true extent of the rust. The edges on both sides are rusting almost all the way around. The fittings and the areas surrounding them also seem to be a weak point. This thin undercoating type material is almost gone and will be replaced once it's back in the car. For the purpose of repainting, I'm going to remove what's left of it. With that gone, the majority of the tank looks like it's in great condition. It's just these edges I'm going to have to focus on. And a few places like this where the paint has been removed one way or another and rust has started. This chisel was great for peeling large strips of rust ridden paint off in one go. With all of the rust revealed, I could use a large rotary tool and a steel wire wheel to remove it. For the tougher areas, I used sanding discs to cut straight through to the good metal, and small wire wheel bits for the tight areas. Next, I use the rust remover that you apply with a brush, leave for 15 minutes and then wipe off. With 99% of the rust gone, I then use the rust converter to treat anything that was left over and turn it into a ready to paint surface in about 3 hours. With the rust truly dealt with at this point, I keyed the entire tank to prepare it for some fresh coats of primer, base coat and lacquer. I 
I then removed any dust, oils and dirt using quartz silicone remover and it was ready to paint. Moving away from the tank for now, I have some very rusty attachments to deal with. I tried the wire wheel on one of the brackets, but it would have taken me a while and possibly a few wire wheels to get through the rust. I popped them in the blaster to see how they would get on in there. That did a much better job, much faster. I then went back to the bench grinder to remove the rest of the rust and polish them up ready for zinc plating. There's a lot of pitting in these brackets, but I can help that a little by filling them with zinc. If you want to know more about electroplating, you can check out my how to zinc plate video in the card on screen now. I repeated this process for all of the pieces, and this is what they came out like. Not bad. The large brackets are going to be painted as well, as they're clearly a weak point. Speaking of painting, let's paint the tank. Firstly, I'm going to give it two coats of quartz VOC filler, which is an idiot proof high build primer that will help smooth everything out. One last wipe down of quartz silicone remover and I'm ready to go. Once that was dry, I dry sanded it flat with 400 and then 800 grit sanding foam pads. I did the same for the brackets, even though you can still see some pitting, I like knowing it's original. Next were two coats of quartz deep black base coat. This is as satisfying to do as it is to watch. I just love painting with a proper spray gun. Lastly is the quartz crystal clear lacquer, which I do two or three coats of, depending on how well I cover the thing I'm painting on the first and second coat. The primer was sprayed with the Devilbiss FLG5 and the base coat and lacquer with the ANI R150Q. With all of the coats on, I turned the fast mover infrared lamp on to cure the paint. I could now remove the masking tape and reattach everything.
Before I do, I need to replace the fuel sender o-ring with a new one and go back to the connection pipe from the start of the video. It turns out this little pipe from BMW was a grand total of 170. Not £1.70, but £170. For this, just ouch. As I had no problems with it before and they are one of the easiest things to replace, I decided to clean this fuel sender and use it until it dies, which should be a good while from now. Before, the level reading thing wasn't moving very freely. After a bit of cleaning, it felt more like it should. I fitted the new O-ring and installed the sender, leaving the hose for now, as I don't have the correct clips. The new connection pipe was then added along with the rest of the attachments. With everything back on, I clamped the large clip things to secure them in place. And there we have it, back to its former glory. And although it will never be seen, it's nice to know it's all set for another 30 years, maybe more without the British weather beating on it. Once all of the chassis parts are here, I'm going to have the rest of the work completed at a professional restoration place close to me, mainly to save me time and to keep the noise down in my workshop. I'll film as much of it as I can and share it with you here in a few episodes to keep this project moving as fast as possible. After that will be the paint prep and painting the chassis, which will also be carried out at the same place. Join me next time when I restore something else from the long list of parts left. Thanks for watching, I'll see you then.